never wanted to give terrible news. Do you love knowing about everyone's business in the family? Do you like dealing with insurance companies? All day. Then this may be the career for you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly LaCroix. I am a genetic counselor. So I wanted to do this video because I feel like a lot of people don't know what genetic counseling is and I wanted to make sure that it reaches more people. Genetic counseling gives you information about how genetic conditions might affect you and your family. Genetic counselors collect things like family history information, prenatal history information, developmental history, um, past medical history, surgeries, hospitalizations, and then we work sometimes closely with doctors, nurse practitioners to help decide if and what type of genetic testing would be best for you. So what does it take to be a genetic counselor? In order to be a genetic counselor, you must have a master's in genetic counseling, a master's in human genetics. There are several programs within the United States that train genetic counselors. So if you back up a little bit, how do you get into grad school? You have to go to undergrad. In undergrad, you can basically study anything that you want. There are people who are psychology majors, music majors, family, I can't remember the exact word, but like more so sociology majors, there are science majors, like I said before, I was a biochem major, um, but as long as you complete the prereqs, um, which is a list of courses that a lot of the genetic counseling programs require, you will still be eligible to apply. I don't know how many programs are currently requiring GRE, but that may be also something that you will have to do, and this is all before applying to the program. A lot of genetic counseling programs like you to have crisis counseling experience. So these can be things like a domestic violence shelter, um, crisis text line is what I did, um, abortion clinics. Just have experience with dealing with people in crises essentially. And another thing, shadow, shadow, shadow experience. Try to shadow as many genetic counselors as you can. Before applying to my program, I shadowed three genetic counselors in the region where I'm from. Um, and it was a great experience because the more you get to shadow, the more the different types of styles you can see, the different type of subspecialties you can see that genetic counselors work in. Um, and it can really give you a sense of if you see yourself doing this as a career. So there are a ton of different areas that genetic counselors work in. They can work in prenatal natal setting, cancer, pediatric research, general genetics, cardiology, um, neurology, industry. There's so many different avenues for us to work in. So you do all this work. You score great on the GREs. You have the letters of recommendation. You go on all these interviews for grad school, which is a whole nother story. That can be a whole separate video of that process. Match with your top choice school. Now, what does grad school? It's basically two years of being uncomfortable because you're going to have to learn a bunch of scientific information as well as counseling methods. You're going to do rotations in different specialties. So the big three are cancer, pediatrics, and prenatal. You're gonna do rotations in those. Um, and these rotations are where you take what you learn in class and you apply them to the real world. Um, so you'll start off slow by first shadowing, but then as you go on further and further, you will be required, of course, to do more in the session. And the session is just an appointment. Um, and that's because by the end of your two years, you need to be able to essentially do a session completely on your own because you're about to graduate and you're about to go into the working field as a genetic counselor. And the best part about it is because not so many people know about genetic counseling. It's a very important field. There are tons, tons of jobs um, open way more than there are available genetic counselors so that's one thing that if you when you're graduating from school maybe not in this current climate in this current situation of being in a pandemic but typically that's not something that you have to worry about when you graduate there are if you, and if you're willing to move basically anywhere in the country there are tons of jobs I personally got into genetic counseling when I was in my second year of undergrad I studied molecular biology, biochemistry, and bioinformatics during my undergraduate time and I really bounced around to different careers. At first I thought I wanted to be a pharmacist, I started out as a chemistry major. I quickly learned that I do not like chemistry like that. I then thought that I wanted to be a high school science teacher, biology probably. Um, and I realized I'm not that good at public speaking in front of large groups of people. 
So during my second year, I actually had a professor who was a genetic counselor and she allowed me to shadow her and it was a wonderful experience. I instantly fell in love with the job. I loved how you could work one-on-one -on -one or with a small group of people and it had that teaching aspect where you're teaching them about genetic information. You're reviewing uh, how certain things could impact their family and how certain things in their family history could be suggestive of a genetic condition but it also had that counseling aspect. We call it psychosocial or not as much anymore. Um, that one-on-one -on -one interpersonal skills where you're navigating this thin line between medical information and very very personal heavy family basically psychological um, concerns that comes along with genetic testing and the impact it can have on multiple family members on your mental health on your physical health even um, so I really liked how it meshed those two worlds together and at that moment I made up my mind that I wanted to be a genetic counselor. Right now so, I'm actually volunteering to evaluate a class for a genetic counseling program. Um, they all as a final assignment have had to do two mock cases, professional actors as the patients, and they have to do a type of results disclosure, which is something we commonly do as genetic counselors. So we order the genetic testing, we coordinate this testing in the sense of obtaining consent, dealing with insurance, prior authorization, all of that fun stuff, um, and then we keep track of those results and we call them out when they're available. So that is kind of what this mock case is. So, I am done the evaluation. I think that it went really well. I love doing things like this because I just graduated last year, so it really just puts me back in the student pers perspective. Can I say the word? Um, so, they're doing this at the end of their first year, having these mock sessions where they're evaluated and graded. We didn't have to do a full session until the end of my second year of training, and it was the most nerve-wracking situation I probably one of the top nerve-wracking situations I've ever been in my entire life. I didn't sleep the night before and my day was actually rescheduled. It was supposed to be earlier on in the semester but um, I think it snowed or something. I don't know and it was canceled and pushed back and when I tell you I could not think about anything other than that um, mock session with the with the actor um, as the patient and mine was in front of my entire class mind you i was in a class of 30. it was one of those windows what are they called the windows where you like they could see you but you can't see them i don't know what that is even called but yeah it went fine so i'm so excited when i do things like this it puts me back in that perspective and it makes me feel um like i'm back in school and always ready to learn the um, dirty mirror but I have a major upgrade in my life I have an actual camera and what does that mean more quality content coming your way now if I could just learn to stable my hand so that the camera isn't shaky and also if I could learn to clean my mirrors that would be great. I have some exciting, exciting news concerning my moving situation, um, but I'm always going to try to continue to do tours, apartment tours, studio tours, just because I love looking at homes. Um, and hopefully when things are a little bit better, it'll be easier for me to go see a lot more apartments. So I'm looking forward to doing that as well. So in all seriousness, I know I started this video as a joke, 
but if you like science and you like talking to people but you know you don't want to be in a lab or you don't want to go to medical school i strongly strongly strong you to consider genetic counseling um even just shadow someone when everything goes back to normal contact a genetic counselor you can go on nsgc.org you click find a genetic counselor and select the option welcome to student contact and you can actually email those genetic counselors maybe just schedule a phone call with them to see what their day-to-day -day is like what their day-to-day -day was like before this pandemic and just get a sense if that's something you could be interested in ever since i graduated i've been interested in giving back to students because i fully believe that if i wouldn't have had a mentor when i was applying to grad school i would not be here today so i always am trying to find ways to give back if that's responding to an email um, talking to prospective students about genetic counseling and what i do um, that's something that greatly interests me another thing that interests me is the fact that genetic counseling doesn't have a lot of non-white people genetic counseling is the majority Caucasian women um, so I really want to advocate for more women and men of different ethnicities um, races etc to join the field um, of genetic counseling and I think that that would be wonderful thanks for watching my video and stay tuned